Welcome to the Just Women Sports Podcast, where we talk to the biggest athletes in the world about the untold stories behind their success. I'm Kelly O'Hara, and my guest today is Carrie Walsh Jennings. Carrie, welcome to the show. Thanks, darling. <laughs> How are you? Smooth. You nailed it on the first run. Thank you. Um, I I interviewed Alex Morgan, and I totally botched it. And she's the <laughs> only one I've botched it for, which is hilarious because I know her. So, um, yeah. So, well, thank sometimes you. Sometimes it's easier to uh, you know do this with total strangers than it is. That is true. That is true. But we are not strangers because we met back in 2016. Totally. At a speaking engagement, and I remember going into that being like, oh my gosh. I'm doing a speaking engagement with Carrie Walsh. Like, this is so cool. Yes, I like totally, totally idolized you and then got there. Oh, no. Shattered. No, 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 not shattered. I was like, you're not supposed to meet them. (laughs) No, that was the thing. I was like, oh my God, afterwards and even during it and just hearing you speak and how you approach things and the way that you've handled your career and everything, I was just so inspired. And I was like, man, I totally like love the way your mind works and your mentality and your your approach. Um, so I've, I've been looking forward to this for a long time to sit down and, and talk about your career and just everything that's gone into it. Um, so thank you. Well, thank for you here. for oh, that. I remember yeah. that day we were in San Fran, right? Yes. I can't remember the company we were with. Me either. <laughs> it, it was like a visa chase. It was, it was something financial. It was like a VC firm or something like that. Okay. Um, yeah. anyhow, yeah, I was, um, I had a good time and I, yeah, I, it's so fun to do those things. It is. Um, and yeah. to listen to other people on in their journeys and your story. Like I remember being like fired up when I left. I was like, Hey, let's go. Totally. I'm pretty sure okay, I wrote coach. notes somewhere because I like looked at my phone this morning looking for them. I thought I put them on my phone, but I must've put them in like a notebook. But from the, some, some of the things that you said, I was just like, Oh, this is, these are words of wisdom. I need to oh. remember these. So. Well, I'm pretty redundant. So get ready for <laughs> Get ready for deja vu. I think, but I think that like redundancy shows that you kind of have, you've nailed it in the sense of like, you understand what it takes and what needs to happen in terms of being successful and what you're going to do. I mean, I have to think so. And what's true, I think generally is always true. It's not just true once in a while, even though things evolve, you know, and like over this course of quarantine and COVID, I've had like... I've had like a zillion and one Zooms. Like, and I'm not even exaggerating. No, I know. I know you're probably not. (laughs) And so, and it's so crazy. You get the same questions and it's always the same answer. And I'm like, gosh, I have to be more creative in my answering. But then I'm like, but then that's making stuff up. Totally. Like, you know, and so I just had to forgive myself for not being more creative in my speak. But no, it's, it's awesome doing podcasts. It's awesome doing those Zooms because it just reinforces, you mm-hmm. know, what I want to keep living. Yeah. Just because I say it doesn't mean I'll live it. I want For sure. to. <laughs> For sure. I believe in it. But, you know, it's like the level of accountability you get when you speak to things um, is so important. So, yeah. yeah. And it makes you, makes you think about, like, you actually have to think on it, ponder, why do I do it this way? Why am I the way I am? That sort of thing. So, um, I totally agree with you. But- yeah. Let's go back oh. to the beginning, where it all started for you. You grew up in NorCal. NorCal, yep. And Very proud. For some reason, I'm like, I'm not a SoCal girl, which really? is so lame because SoCal has been so good to me. Totally. But I'm just so rootsy. Like, I just, my, my whole family's in Northern California, you know, and it's just where your people are is where your soul is, I think. And so I, um, I think Manhattan Beach, this area is an amazing second best. That's yeah, no, it's not. That's not a bad place. Yeah, poor me. <laughs> God. Exactly. But so you grew up in in Nor- Northern California. Um, so kind of explain, give us a rundown on how you got introduced to volleyball. How did you get into it? Yeah, well, I think, I mean, in the very beginning, um, I was born to two athletes who were come from a family of athletes. And so I feel like I have no choice. I had no choice in the matter. And I feel like when I talked to God before I came down, <laughs> like I had a landscape and I was like, I want to go with those people in that family because I want to develop myself as a lion and be competitive and learn about myself, you know, through that, that platform. And so my whole life, Kelly has been sports, like from the minute go, you know, my which, parents, which sports did your parents play? All of them, okay. like literally all of them. Um, I remember being 10 and they were in a bowling league 
you know, it's just, and it was like gnarly competitive <laughs> bowling league. Like there were a couple fights afterward in the street. Like it was so funny. Um, but my parents are just, they are my favorite athletes and I got to watch them compete. And my, my, both my grandparent, my grandfather's like one of them's in the, um, hall of fame at Santa Clara, no way. two sports in the orange bowl. Um, that's my dad, my mom's dad. And then my dad's dad, uh, he was a pro baseball player, pitching coach, coach of Santa Clara. And then my grandmother's just gnarly competitors in their own way. And so I just, it's just in me, you Mm -hmm. know? And so growing up, I played everything. I have a big brother. Um, we're 11 months apart. So whatever he did, I did. You guys are 11 months apart. I I was a total accident. (laughs) You're an Irish twin. (laughs) We are. And I'm so proud of that. Yeah. Yeah, We're the same age for about 30 days and it's like magical time. Are you two? No, my sister's 16 months older than me. So we're close, but not exactly. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. It, it, and now my brother is real twins, boy and girl twins, Waylon and Murphy. And Murphy is a soccer player in our family, Murphy and my boy, Joey. So she's going to be very excited. I'm doing this. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah. So no, growing up, I just, everything was sports and I just fell in love with it. And I got to know myself through sports. I played baseball, basketball, um, soccer. It was terrible. I never understood the offsides rule. Literally. I'm like, get off me. I'm just hustling. <laughs> I never got it. Um, it's okay. Now, You're not the I only fully, person to not get dude, it. Dude, I swear to God, my brain would not figure it out. Like it just, I, I just rejected the whole concept. <laughs> so I quit. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, it's pretty pathetic really. Cause I wish I would have played soccer for much longer. I would have been so much better on my feet. I'm like perpetually Bambi. <laughs> No, I, do it. I kind of am. And that's okay. It serves me. I fall well, <laughs> you know, but, um, but no, so growing up, it was just that. And I grew up in the Santa Cruz mountains, which is, you know, like God and nature and family and sport. Like that was totally. my life. That remains my life. Um, and then I found volleyball in the fifth grade. It was offered at my school at St. Mary's in Los Gatos. And I literally just fell in love the first moment. All my best friends were playing. It was the first girl only sport I played, okay. which I don't think I had a consciousness that this was different, but I just, there was like an ease and an at-homeness to it that that probably helped with. I don't Interesting. Know. Interesting. Yeah. So how soon did you go from picking up volleyball in fifth grade to volleyball being the only sport you were playing? Um, when I got to college. So I played, really? mm-hmm, I played four years of high school basketball um, at Archbishop Midian in San Jose, which is a great program, great, amazing school. And I did it only because my Nana loved it. And my Nana, literally my hero, she passed away when I was at Stanford, a freshman. Um, and it, the cross training was incredible. It mm-hmm. just made me tougher. You know, I was center. I was like 5'11", weighed zero pounds, and I got my butt kicked every game. It made, pissed me off. It made me tougher. I had to develop myself in a lot of different ways. And I wanted to be the best volleyball player I could be. And that was part of my toolkit, you know, like enduring and suffering basketball. (laughs) Thank goodness we won. Otherwise, I would have been (laughs) miserable. Miserable. So so at what point did you realize, okay, volleyball is it for me. I'm still going to play these other sports because I want to be the best in volleyball. But like at what point did you realize that you had it? Well, I – God, I I, I honestly (laughs) – it's so weird because I'm still waiting to realize that. Fully. No, get I out of here. I swear to God. No. no, I swear to God. Like my insecurities <laughs> are ridiculous. No. Uh, it's, I know. But no, but at the same time, Kelly, like I, if you don't pick me to be on your team, you're, you're not a smart human. Like I know that you want me on your team. Trust you me. Know? If we're playing volleyball, I'm picking you. Don't worry. <laughs> well, if we're playing most things you want me, let me just okay, let you no, know I, that. I'm but no, I'm kidding. Um, but no, so it's an interesting kind of dichotomy I have, but I just feel like the better I get, the more I realize it's kind of like the smarter you get, the more you realize you don't know anything. And I feel like that's certainly within the game. And I don't know if it's because like I used to just lean on my physicality and now I have like the, the sport is so physical that the other sides of me are being developed more and there's like infinite room for, you know, potential and, and excellence. So I think that's what I feel when I say that, because I don't want to have false sense of humility. Like I, I know I'm rad. I, but I also know, man, I could play for 18 lifetimes and just scratch the surface. So. I, yeah, I feel like a lot of people feel that way in their sport. They're chasing not perfection, but excellence. And, and as an athlete, you understand that that you'll, you'll never achieve perfection. So you're just always reaching for it. And it's never going to come, but you still strive no. for that excellence, I guess. Yeah. 
Well, and yeah, just those little, like little bits of incremental improvement. Like sure. it's, it's just for lack of a better word, it's just a drug that mm-hmm. keeps you wanting more. It is addictive. I feel like a yeah. lot of athletes have addictive personalities. I mean, I'm a great shopper too. <laughs> it, sh- it shows up in other areas in my life. Oh um, man. Yeah. But no, the pursuit of like my potential and my growth um, and just me being a great, well-rounded human it all, sport has given me that. For sure. You know, so, so you, you, you don't know if you, or you don't know if you've realized you have it yet. However, you start in fifth grade, you end up going to Stanford for volleyball, not basketball. No. Um, and you end up being a four-time All-American at Stanford, a two-time NCAA champion. Yes. So at that point, where are you at in your career? Where are you at in your mentality? How are you looking at yourself as a volleyball player? Um, I felt at home at Stanford. I felt like I belonged. Um, I was just hungry. You know, I'm not much of a forward thinker. I'm, I'm very much like I'm in the moment and I try to live right now really sincerely. And I never really thought of life that way. I just live where I'm at, you know? And so my time at Stanford, I, I didn't really think of my time beyond the farm. Really? I just had no. And, but that being said, my freshman year, um, it was 1996 and the Olympics had just happened in Atlanta and we had a scrimmage against the national team okay. and that was preseason stuff. And so that was like my first kind of engagement with the next level. And I think I got one kill and it was a horrific performance by me when usually would devastate me, Kelly, but it like made me like, Oh my God, if I can do that once I can do it again, because I felt like I was such a waif. I was 18. Um, and I'm playing against these women. Yes. <laughs> like the, the sport has changed like in the like mid nineties, like these, the women were, I mean, just different. <laughs> they there were, were women. They, they were, women. they seemed like they were like all mid thirties. Totally. You know, which well, they weren't. Yeah. But they, they just seemed that way. Yeah. And I don't know. Cause they're the pioneers. Like they had to go through it. <laughs> they're just different, you know, for sure. So playing that, I think planted the seed for what would become the next step, which is the Olympics, you know, indoor, but I just enjoyed my time at Stanford so much was so inspired. And obviously like our winning record, I was just on the best teams with the raddest coaches. So it was, it was a great time. Did you going into Stanford, did you know, that you guys were going to be good? Did they already have that reputation as a volleyball team on the national stage? They did. A couple years prior, I want to say like 94, maybe, I don't know if they went back to back before I got there, but they had definitely won a championship and they were, yeah, they were a legacy program for sure already. Um, UCLA, I think was the top dog, but the world, the landscape was changing. And I came in with a stacked junior class um, like if you're a volleyball player, you would know the names, like some of the best ever in collegiate volleyball were my upperclassmen and the senior class that was going out, they were rad as well. But the junior class that I had two years with them to develop myself, to be inspired by them and guided by them. And that really made all the difference. If, uh, Stanford had that legacy already, you clearly, mm-hmm. you went there being like, I want to be part of the best hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. I mean, I grew up like Santa Clara is right there, which my whole, uh, so many of my, my mom went there. So many family members went, went there when I was like, my parents would just take us everywhere. We'd go to the giants and the A's and the warriors and Santa Clara and to Stanford and San Jose state. And they would just take us these places and I would just take it all in. But every time we went to Stanford, like my parents' eyes would get big and they'd be like, Carrie, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> you know, and, That's cool like, that they wanted oh. you to go there. I totally. Well, they, it's just, you know, I'm going to piss some people off, but it's just the best of the best it really in is. the area. That's the best of right. That's the best of the best. Yeah. We don't have to fight about this. Um, I appreciate <laughs> exactly. that. Yeah. It's um, it just is. And it's the pinnacle. Yeah. You know? And so it was, it was really rad that they believed in me and they gave me the tools like Carrie, you, you can't just be an athlete. You have to be more than that. You have to be a great student. You have to bust your ass and be really disciplined. Um, and do you want it? They could clearly see that I wanted it and that I had more in me. And so I, they would take me to games. I did summer camps there. I think starting when I was 11, um, I was ball girl there, you know? So I was just in the program. They just didn't know it until I was 18. (laughs) That makes sense. That makes sense. But so, so that everyone who's listening or everyone listening is clear. You went to Stanford and played indoor volleyball. You played indoor volleyball up until 2001. And you said that you played against the U S indoor volleyball team in 96 before they went to the Olympics. So, and that was your first time 
thinking, oh, that was, that was the first time you thought, oh, I might want to go play in the Olympics? Well, it was just my first interaction with the next level. Got it. You know, I had been in Team USA in the developmental pipeline okay. um, since I was, I think, 14 or something like that. But you're just kind of always with your group. Yes. You know, cause it's just the difference between a 16 year old and even an 18 year old is drastic. You know, I mean, you know this. And so it's just, I just had to keep leveling up and that was my first taste of, of the next level. And I think it planted a seed. And then, you know, prior to that, like my first remembrances of the Olympics was the, the dream team in 92. You know, that's why I wore number nine, Mia Hamm and Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan cool. were number nine in the Olympics. And so I just like, I, I don't know. I, and I love being an American. Like I just, all these things, but playing against the national team, and it was actually just after the Atlantic Olympics and they okay. were off because they didn't perform well. <laughs> I think they took it out on us, but, um, but yeah, so that, that just happened, you know, and I feel like stuff like that happens in my life where if I like think about like, why am I in this position now? Oh, well, maybe four years ago when I got my ass kicked by the indoor team at Planet of the Sea and like, I wanted more, you know? Totally. Yeah. So you, you, you got your ass kicked in 96, but then you go on to make the 2000 Olympic team and your first Olympics was actually indoor. Oh, it was. Yes. And, and yes. what was, what was that like for you? That experience? It was, it was, it was largely rad. Um, you know, I mean, representing our great country is amazing. And I love my team. Um, I it's, it was bittersweet, but you know, gosh, there's so many things to say. So I had a false positive doping test really at, at the Sydney games and they pulled me aside. We had just warmed up for the game, our first match of the Olympics. Um, and my coach pulled me aside saying, Carrie, you can't play. You oh tested positive for something. And I literally like, I was like, you got the wrong girl. Did you, <laughs> did your blood Ugh. go ice cold? Did you just freeze? I was so inside? confused. I was, and I like a month before I, we were playing in China and I blew out my ankle and I had busted my ass to come back. And it was just, they, and they told me, they're like, you have to tell your team that your ankle hurts and you can't play. And I was like, um, they know me. <laughs> I know that's not what's going on. Oh my goodness. And I was just a wreck. And so I had to suffer through that. And they told me to go home. They're like, we can't help you. If we help you, it's conflict of interest. Like it was literally like, get out of here, kid. And that broke my soul in so many different ways. My mom like is the biggest warrior I know. And she went to town and, and solved the problem. But I carried a lot of resentment, a lot of heartbreak because of that. I was able to play. I think I missed the first two, maybe three. I can't remember exactly. Three matches. Um, and then I was able to play. We finished fourth. Amazing. And you guys, you had to solve that while you were at the games. Oh yeah. Like I was at midnight meetings. Mm -hmm. I, we had to find scientists and lawyers and like, I, I remember practicing being like literally walking in circles being like, <laughs> What, what am I doing? I could not, I was so confused. My team, like they knew something was up, but I couldn't tell them. Like it was just, it was the worst. Did they let you, and they let you continue to practice with the team, but they wouldn't let you play in the first they couple did. games. Yeah. Yeah. And they, yeah. And I just couldn't tell anybody. I had to tell them it was my ankle and everyone's like, you're practicing. Like, what are you, <laughs> what's happening? So it finally got solved. I had, I got to do a blood test. They realized it was naturally occurring in my body that it had always been there. Okay. Had they done one inch of digging, they would have seen this. Wow. So it was all for naught. But without that heartbreak, I wouldn't have moved the move to beach volleyball. I was about There's to say, no so did that contribute to the decision to go from indoor to beach? 100 million percent. Okay. Yeah. Cause you, you left that Olympics and then how soon after were you like, no, I'm, I'm done with this. Well, I'm going somewhere else, you know, I mean, obviously in the quadrennial life, um, the next Olympics was four years down the road. So yes. I didn't feel like I had to make that decision with regard to team USA, but I did not want to go play overseas to make a living. Um, I, and you know, it's like eight months being away from home and I yep. didn't want to do that. And so I was like, gosh, what am I going to do? But I was willing to do that. Cause I didn't want to give up volleyball, but my, my soul was crushed. And then at the Olympic Games, Misty's parents, Misty May Trainer, who's playing beach volleyball at that time, she finished fifth with Holly McPeak. Um, her parents and my parents hung out at the USA house and they had like a little date and they created this master plan of getting us girls together. No and way. Having a tryout. And because of that conversation um, in early, I think it was January of 2001, I drove down. I was training at Stanford. I was going to school at Stanford, finishing up. I drove down and had a tryout. That changed my entire life. So when you say tryout, what do you mean by that? Because yeah, <laughs> my understanding is that you just are a good volleyball player. You have, there's another good volleyball player. You guys text each other. You say, let's be partners. And then you, the other person says, okay. And then you become partners. No. Well, I think generally that happens. Okay. Um, but usually, I mean, okay. But Misty was the best in the world. 
you know, so yes. her process might be a little bit more. <laughs> sure. She wanted, she needed to vet this. Yeah. Well, her parents did. Misty okay. is as cruiser as cruiser gets. And so basically it was just a day of volleyball. Like it was that casual. We just played matches, no drills, no, no guidance, like carry Misty, go play. Okay. And, um, and so that's what happened. And her parents were there and her parents were her coaches and, um, okay. and Misty was looking for a change because she had just went through this gnarly thing with her first Olympics with an older partner who was rad Holly McPeak. Uh, but she wanted to grow in the game with someone her own age. And I'm a year younger than Misty and today's her birthday. Oh, happy yeah, birthday, Misty. I know. She's such a superstar. Um, and so, yeah, it was just like my world was shifting. Misty's world was shifting. Our parents got together and we just had a casual day, but it was casual for Misty because that was her happy space and that's where she was comfortable. I had literally avoided playing beach volleyball my entire life. Like okay, I was consciously being like, I'm not going to go over there because I'm going to look like a, an idiot. Really? Why did you think that? Because it was the truth. <laughs> Again. No, dude, I, I know. I, I really got to work on this, but it is the truth. So it's just. Well, you obviously I mean, I, did. You obviously did well enough. Well, because... it was shallow sand in Huntington Beach, which was oh. very helpful because that's like the equalizer. You know, if it was did your, did your parents um, scout that for you to get you in? No, I was just sand? God helped. <laughs> <laughs> picked a good divine location. intervention for the totally. rest of your my whole, that's career. my whole life I swear to you um no so it was just a really good day it was like I literally was on the verge of a panic attack the entire time like so like well, because you were so nervous totally and I wanted it like I didn't realize I wanted it before that but driving down like I remember having a moment where I could literally hear my heartbeat out of my chest and you can see you know when you're so nervous your shirt is like <laughs> Bouncing. I'm pretty sure I've done some interviews where I'm like, oh my God, can everyone see that my heart is pounding out of my totally. chest? Totally. Yeah. You have that little slight shake in your hand. Yeah. So that was happening the whole time. Um, but I just played, you know, and we were like, when we were in the points, I was just in the points, you know, and just like busting my ass and doing, I feel like what I do best is hustle. Yeah. You know? So I was just in it. Um, and we had some kind of synergy and rhythm and it was fun. And certainly I had so much raw potential. <laughs> and so I think they saw that, which was good. Why was Misty your idol? I, I read somewhere that you, when you first met her, you, you asked for her autograph and she's only yeah. two years older than you. One year. One year. So barely one year. Yeah. So what, what had she, or why do you think that you felt the way that you did just because she, she was so accomplished within the beach world or what was it? No, no. Cause I, she was my idol when she was playing indoor. I didn't even Got know it. she played beach. I didn't know okay. her history. I didn't know her. Just, it would almost, her and Misty seem a lot alike to me, or excuse me, Mia seem a lot. Got alike. it. Okay. Very okay. stoic, funny as hell, quirky, um, like Jedi and will just, you'll be dead and you don't even know how it happens, <laughs> right? They just do it. And so Misty was just, I was just so enamored with how she played and she was so steady and such a winner and a lot of what drew me to her, like as a fan, was like because she's the opposite of me. Like, I mean, I could like take it like ten chill pills right now because I'm so fired up, and she just like <laughs> she never gets there, you know. Oh. And I'm like, God, I want to be like that. And like, how does she do it? And um, I gave up that dream a long time ago because I'm just not that person. But she just, I don't know, she was just next level to me. And they won a lot, and I just wanted to win. And she was always the deciding factor in their victories. That's so interesting. Hmm. I, to, just because hearing you talk, I feel like we're very similar in the sense of we get fired up very easily. We're high energy. I have to meditate before games to bring myself <laughs> down so that I'm not too excited. And it's, it is fascinating that there's people, Misty, me, there's people out there that are just even keel killers. Yes. Isn't that so, the list? It is. It is a great. I mean, when people do be, things like. slow, it's like sexier, you know, and it's also cooler. Smoother. You know, yeah. like I listen to Sade before I play. Like that's, I'm like bringing it down. <laughs> you totally, totally. So, and Misty's probably like listening to Tool or something like gnarly to like get her up. I don't know, but it's pretty funny. How, so at what point do you call you? Did, did you get a text being like, oh. do they even, they probably didn't have, do they have texting? No. Like well, no. I think I had a flip phone for sure. <laughs> totally. She T9 texted you. <laughs> um, so, so oh at gosh. what point after that one day of just playing, did you say, all right, let's make this official. Let's be partners. You know, she had signed up for some tournaments with Holly 
so, and that was like a couple months down the road and I was going to be nowhere near ready and I was still going to Stanford. And so I drove down every weekend. I'm pretty sure. And I, I would live with Misty. Well, yeah. So you, I, you would train, you would drive down and train with her, but yeah. she was still competing with somebody else. Yeah. And that like kind of took the pressure off a little bit, you know, cause she was still committed, still focused. We, I can't remember how soon after we had that tryout that they're like, yeah, well, let's make a go of this. Cause she didn't tell the partner she was playing with yet. You know, and it's just such a tricky thing. Oh, it's, it's the most so, awkward thing. I'm so is. thankful I'm not a beach volleyball player because I know, of that. dude. Yeah, that would crush me. I've never had to live that, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just, I don't know how you do that. Bro. I don't know how you break up with someone well. <laughs> no, it's, it never goes well. It's so no personal. Breakup is ever, yeah, it doesn't no. sound fun. No. So, well, she eventually breaks up with... Holly, yeah. Right? And then, yes. you and then I, I literally, our first tournament, we were in Cagliari, Italy, like an island off Italy. And I submitted my final Stanford paper while I was Italy fax machine. I remember it fax took machine. forever to go through. And then I was like, ah, oh, I'm free. You're free. And I missed graduation. And um, yeah, and it was just go. And we traveled the world like and we traveled the world together going to at least 10 to 15 tournaments a year together around the world just her and I living out of suitcases and getting to know each other like it was the coolest and do you think that is what did you guys have initial chemistry on and off the court or do you think that it was a overtime build sort of thing um I think it was very helpful that we we're the same age for sure um we had on the court chemistry, no doubt. Off the court, yeah, I think we we're comfortable being quiet. You know, Misty is, she's really quiet. Um, and when she's not, she's not, but it's totally yeah. on her time. And um, so <laughs> I still drive her crazy asking too many questions. But um, no, it, well, and then the second year we were together, her mom passed away and she, you know, she had been sick. And, um, and so we went through that together. And I feel like I was one of Misty's support systems. Like, what a gift to be able to support somebody you love in that way. For um, sure. And that, for sure brought us together. Barbara went to heaven and then we were on the road together, you know? So I feel like that really, really solidified us. Not that for we sure. didn't have issues after that, but going through life stuff together, obviously that intimacy and that depth and trust is formed and that yeah. served us forever. Yeah. I feel like when it comes to beach volleyball, it's you and one other person, the, the closeness, you just can't get around. You have to have that to be you successful. To. I really and, believe you have to. Yeah, no, absolutely. I don't know how you would enjoy, how you could be successful with somebody that you didn't enjoy or like, like as a person. Yeah, but it's like, no, it's true, but it happens all the time because people are like, I'm going to settle for the lack of connection because we're good athletes together. And Makes it's sense. kind of, and I don't want to, there's, I was just going to say slim pickings, but that's not very kind. And I don't <laughs> I, even know if that's true. Yes, but it's a small community. Yes. <laughs> and if you do connect with someone as a, as a partner and a friend, like that's a beautiful gift. Cause that's totally. not normal and it's worth fighting for. And yeah. I think if I'm going to fast forward a little bit to go to Rio, my time with April, who I love April, she's an incredible human. We're very different. And I think the lack of emotional connection, even though there was an emotional connection, but the lack of depth between us I feel like it makes sense that we had third, got third, even though we were the best team in the world. Mm -hmm. And even though I take full responsibility because I had a really nightmare match in the semifinal, we didn't have that. So, you know, when you're like this in times of trouble, it gets a little bit bigger usually. Yep. Misty and I would get in trouble. We were like this, get mm -hmm. in trouble, and we became this, mm -hmm. you know, because I don't know why. It's just that trust was so deep. Um, I mean, it makes sense. It totally makes sense, but you have to fight for it. And April, and she's so cute. I would be talking to her about these kind of fluffy emotional things and she'd be, going, she'd be like, Carrie, I literally don't understand you. I literally have no concept. <laughs> and I'm just like, gosh, I don't know how to say it. Oh. And then I just stopped, I stopped trying for it. And you know, it, no, no right or wrong. It's yeah. just, that's important just, to me. Mm -hmm. you know? And so I feel like if it was less of an issue for me, it probably would have been less of an issue. Yeah. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't, but yeah. it worked for you guys. And yes. you went on the most insane run. You yes. in 2003, you went at a then record 90 matches in a row, including the world championship. So fun. And then you go on to the 2004 Olympics and you don't drop a single set in all seven matches, which yeah. is incredible. Yeah. And you take home gold. So what were your, what was your mindset going into those games? That was the first time you were going to be going in one as partner with Misty May and in a 
not new sport, but new yeah. silo. What do you, what do you want to call it? Discipline of the there sport in, in beach volleyball. So yeah. what, what was, what was your mindset going into those games? Dude, well, we, first of all, we got together in 2001. And so we had three years of traveling four, really three and a half seasons of traveling the world, competing against the best. The first two years were really up and down. And by the time we got to Athens, we were just ready. Like we were winning a lot, like you said, um, and we were firing at all cylinders. We were young and hungry and confident. And it was just the most fun. And the pressure was like pressure that like made you like smile, you know? Really? Yeah. Um, because we're like, no, we, we know better, <laughs> you know? And and this is how it should be. And it, it just like, when I think of Misty and I in Athens, for some reason, I want to think of a, like a Michael Jordan, like when he's like screwing with his competitors. Basically, Not that we did felt that. Like we basically felt like we can't lose. We're, we're too good. We've, we're too in sync. We've got this. It's almost like this is, this is fun. This pressure is fun because we know we're going to come yeah. out on top in the end. We never once thought about losing ever. We don't talk about losing ever. Like we literally, Butch May, Missy's dad was like, you guys, a 21 to five match is too close. And we carried that mentality with us through our whole 10 years together. But certainly in Athens, because it was our first time together, the, the pressure wasn't as big as trying to repeat, you know, and when you live a life and you get more experience. Um, so we came with that determination and we literally want to crush people down and we did. And it was awesome. I, I think that's one hilarious 21 to five is too close <laughs> of a score line. And we because, agreed. <laughs> yeah. That's like basically nine zero in soccer, nine to one in soccer. <laughs> um, so y- you guys, you guys crush, you guys are on top of the world. You go on the next four years and completely dominate again over and over you go into 2008 olympics and you've won 101 consecutive matches in a row and everyone wants to break that streak so how was 2008 different than 2004 and in my when i think about it it's like you won before so is the pressure are you guys still having that pressure of oh this is smiles like we're gonna win or are you feeling more stressed because you have something that you need to double down on. You need to back it up. Yeah. Well, it was really interesting because like immediately after Athens, it was like, okay, we're doing this again. (laughs) We're going to go and kick ass. And so we had this focus of four years out what we wanted to do. And we both lived that journey to Beijing very differently. So I got married in at the end of 05. Um, At early 2006, I was pregnant. Okay. Um, 11, nine weeks in, I had a miscarriage and that crushed me. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was so, I mean, there's so many, so many nuances to the story, but I feel like because that happened and the way it happened, if I were to get pregnant again right away, um, which I wanted with all my heart, cause I wanted that broader life. Cause my job started to feel very trivial. I'm like, I need more in my life. Like this, I'm just, just so self-serving, like help me out. And, and I was in love with my man. And so, um, got pregnant miscarriage, but because I couldn't get pregnant right away, otherwise it could have turned into cancer. The decision was made for me that we're going to basically wait till after Beijing. Got it. And so everything became about winning. Like I just could not enjoy where I was because I wasn't winning gold yet. And so for four years, I was just so fixated on winning that we won a lot and it was so fulfilling. And Missy and I were super tight. And our coach, Troy Tanner, was so amazing. Like our little trio was so on point, but my life was suffering. And that reared its ugly, ugly head right after Beijing. And um, the walls came crashing down, but we won. <laughs> you won in <laughs> Beijing. So do you no. think that, do you think that it, I mean, I guess you kind of alluded to this, that it was unhealthy that you, you won in 2004. And do you think winning in 2004 made you almost just like yearn and strive towards another gold and that's all that you were fixated on like you said like that's and you you found that to be unhealthy well I don't think the winning of the gold made me that way I think I think the lack of balance in my life made me that way 
you know, and you know, it's like really scary or was for me at least to make the decision to get pregnant because I'm a pro athlete. Like my career is so finite and I made that brave decision when a lot of people were like, don't do it. <laughs> like you're in your prime, you're going to ruin your body. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and I didn't, I was so happy with the decision. And then I have a miscarriage, which just crushed me. And, um, that I think was a deciding factor and that set the tone for me moving forward. And, you know, I've never listened to Misty about how her, how she lived her journey to Beijing. I should ask her about that. Yeah, I, was, because, I was actually going to ask that. I was curious if you guys yeah, had, I don't know. was it similar or were you both? She wanted to get pregnant paths? after Beijing. Okay. Um, and that was her plan. But, you know, when I decided to get pregnant, I remember writing Missy Lesser letters being like, Missy, I'm going to get pregnant. But my mom said I could play till I'm like six months because I'll be so like, baby will be protected and my belly won't be out. So I think I could do this. And then you go play and kick out with someone else and get points. And then I'll come back. And she had a lot of reservations about it or a lot of fear. Or I, I had to, f I fought really hard for myself within my partnership with Misty. And, but I think she had wrapped her head around playing with somebody else. And then I had my miscarriage and I was like, I'm back. And I think she had a lot of resentment. I, I, I was going through stuff I didn't even know how to navigate. And the focus became winning everything. Um, but yeah, I don't know her experience. And that would be a very valuable conversation. Do you think that because things were falling apart outside of the lines of sand volleyball court, that's what made you so focused and just win at all costs because that was the only thing that you could control maybe for for sure you know i didn't realize my life was falling apart my marriage in particular was falling apart i didn't realize that um because i i was so connected to my husband you know and i was writing love letters and i was doing the things that i thought were enough but they weren't mm -hmm. um and i realized that you know when he was ready to walk out the door um so i yeah i don't i don't i don't know the exact perfect storm of, I wanted I wanted to win with all my heart and for sure winning makes you greedy, you know, and I knew that Misty and I could be just so dominant. And so, I mean, all of those things for sure, but it's just like, you know, there's a, there's a way to win. There's a way to lose. You spoke about excellence earlier. And to me, it's so hard to speak to because it's a feeling, you know, and for like sure. going and I, yeah. So I don't know. The feelings were a lot. <laughs> And I don't know, like I was immature, you know, and I just like, how do you handle these things? And when you're an athlete, when you can't control anything, yeah, you for sure go internal, yeah. you know, and that serves me so well in times of COVID. Like I, I know how to focus on what I can control and True. I know how yeah. to show up and set the tone and do these things. And I think I just had to live that, you know, and, and realize that dude, Carrie, you might be going through this, but there's another human, <laughs> right. And what you, your choices of what to do and don't do impact them. Mm -hmm. So don't be so self-absorbed, like be compassionate, share your grief, which I didn't do. Cause I didn't know how to, um, and lean on your people. Yeah. You know, I, I learned that because I didn't do it in one of the hardest times of my life. And so winning that gold was awesome. It made me happy for about 30 seconds. Oh, and then my life fell apart. And then it was like two years of learning the lessons of everything I had neglected. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, so don't do what I did. <laughs> <laughs> what are your relationships? Kelly? Oh man. No, trust me. I, I, I do. I try as hard as I possibly can. I get the hose out. Um, <laughs> there we go. But so, but you win in 2008 mm -hmm. with Misty. Um, and after 2008, you give birth to your first child. Were you yeah. pregnant at those games or were you, did you get pregnant right after? We got pregnant in Beijing. Got it. Okay. Yes. Okay. So you have, you have your first child and I don't know if you want to go into it as much or at all, but how did all those things that you were neglecting off of the court resolve post Beijing? Well, um, golly it's my husband was out the door he's like i'm done i can't do this anymore um and i'm like overdue with my our first kid oh together like literally five days late or seven days late i can't remember and he tells me this um i had gotten well prior to that i had gotten in two car crashes um people hit me out of nowhere the second one was the day he told me he can't do this anymore Jesus. Um, I'm in the hospital. I had to take a taxi there. Like my world was falling apart is what I'm trying to explain to you. Yes. And my husband and I had, no, I guess we hadn't been in therapy yet. I started going to 
my performance psychologist who turned into my counselor um, during this time earlier, because I'm like, I got something going on. I don't know what it is. And it all, I think, stemmed from whatever, miscarriage and trauma that I didn't know about um, or that I buried. And so my like butterfly effect, my whole universe was shaking and things were falling apart because it's like, God was like, Carrie, you need to change things. <laughs> like, stop, like, stop just going. The athlete in me, the coper in me, that I can suck it up or in me mm-hmm. was like, I'm just going to power through this and work through this. When like the whole universe is like, stop. Totally. My husband was crying, stop. Mm-hmm. Like, just be here and mm-hmm. feel this and work through this and be mindful, you know? And so, um, I I did a lot of therapy on my own. My husband did a lot of work on his own. We did a lot of therapy together. Um, I was all in. I, you know, and he was this like tip of the finger in. And my guy was like, Carrie, if your husband has the tip of a finger and you have hope. I was about to say, that's all you need. That's all you need. You need something. Need. Yeah. yeah. And so I kept focusing on that. Um, I stopped focusing on him and just focused on what I could do and how I was showing up. That was hugely relieving. Mm-hmm. You know, I stopped like trying to do things just for a reaction or hoping to get something. It was just so exhausting and it's just not fair to anybody, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and so it was an awesome life-changing process to be, to live hell of your own making Yeah, and to fight through it and to, to keep focused on what I wanted, which was clarity for my husband. So he could just make his decision soundly. Um, I wanted to own up to everything that I hadn't done and why I'd hurt my husband so bad. I wanted to fix those things and address them as much as possible and act differently. Mm -hmm. Um, And we do, we did it. And a lot of people, like every relationship is salvageable. salvageable. I mean, you know, eliminate abuse, eliminate the horrific things, which are so real. Um, And my guys like Carrie, most people just don't do the work, but largely- Right. And so are you willing to do the work? And he said the same thing to my husband and that Casey was open enough to hear that. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you know, we have this child, we're married. If you're telling me there's a chance, I'm going to go all in. And that, you know, and he was pissed and he hated me. He couldn't even look at me, you know? And so, but he pushed through that and it was yeah. awesome. And I gave him space mm-hmm. and which was very hard, you know, cause all you, all I wanted was a smile or like <laughs> some kind of something, word, some sort of getting. affirmation. Yeah. yeah. And that's that, you know, again, that's not fair to either of us. And so, um, It was awesome. It was great. Yeah. I mean, well, sounds like it obviously all worked out, which is incredible and more power to you guys, which is like, like you said, that's, that's pretty amazing. How was your career on the court or in the sand? How was that going during that time? Well, I, so I got pregnant back to back. We have Irish okay. twins as well. Oh, cool. So, yeah. My boys are three days shy of a year apart. Okay. So my Casey went into rehab when my Joey, our Joey was three months old. Okay. And no, nope, before that. So he went in when he was two months old, got out on his three month and I got pregnant like that minute. Wow. <laughs> the minute. And it was like, I wanted, like, I just, I knew we'd be, I had this feeling and knowing that we would be okay, but dumbest thing ever, if your marriage is in jeopardy to like get pregnant. You know, try to get pregnant, but you know, and it wasn't, it didn't feel like that. It didn't feel like a Hail Mary. It didn't feel like any of these things, but my, certainly my husband was like, babe, I still need, I I'm working through stuff still, mm-hmm. you know? And so it's just, we were, we were finding each other again. Um, and there was sincerity behind us, but there was just a lot still to work through, but we got, I mean, we're just as fertile as can be, which makes, this is might be TMI, but it makes every month so <laughs> stressful. <laughs> um, so, but no, so we have Joey and Sundance. Okay. They're our Irish twins. Um, we got a little Taurus and a little Jedi or Gemini who is Aww. a Jedi. And, uh, yeah, so I was, I was pregnant <laughs> so you as we navigated this. So it basically gave you kind of this pause in your career. It did. I, so I got, I had Joey and then I was back to the court right away and I played, um, in between the time I had Joey and where I couldn't play anymore with Sundance. Got so it. I played in a couple of tournaments before the boys. And then once Sundance was born, it was like, I want L- London, you know? And so it's just, and by then we were out of the weeds. We were like back together a hundred percent. Yeah, doing good. So how how um how much time was there between having Sundance and going into 2012 Olympics? So Sundance was born May 19th, 20, 2010. Okay. Um yeah, so, so yeah, you have two so two I, year lead up. Two year lead up. Misty had retired or she was like getting ready to I can't remember because she was playing with someone else because mm-hmm. I was pregnant and then um she retired at some point. And then, so I had chosen another partner to go to London with. 
Okay. Who's a dear friend, who's an okay. incredible girl from Arinda, NorCal girl. Um, and then Misty changed her mind. <laughs> so what happened oh. with that? How did you Dude. <laughs> get, give me that rundown. You uh, had to break Kelly. up with somebody. You said you never had to do that. I, well, did I, well, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't have to lie to them. Oh, oh not Misty that you ever was, have to lie. Misty was lying back in the day when she no, was having that's secret my, rendezvous. No. <laughs> I just don't know, you know, no, I know. I'm lying kidding. by omission. True, <laughs> true, true, true. The case, you know, you got to do what you got to do sometimes. I don't know. No one's perfect. For sure. I'm judging. I'm grateful. No. Um, but so I, I was fully committed with Nicole Branagh who okay. is a dear friend. I mean, this changed our relationship forever. I think she's still is mad at me, um, which she should be. it's totally fine. But she, uh, so I remember I called, I called Misty called me and she's like, Carrie, I've talked to you and Misty. That's like unheard of. And I thought I had pissed her off in some way in some article or something. Cause you know, it's really touchy. All these Wait, things. before you tell the story, can you yeah. tell me how she told you she was planning on retiring? What was that? I think like? She just said it. Like, you I just, don't even, okay. I have the, first of all, I have the worst memory. <laughs> like, thank gosh, I know my name is Carrie. Um, but it's like, so details, you know, grain of salt, but these, I'm giving you the essence, <laughs> but no, so I can't remember. I, re- when I, what I do remember, I remember distinctly, but, um, I don't remember her saying that. I think I remember when she retired and I was picking a partner being like, missed, are you done? you know, like for real, because I'm going to, I'm going to move on. You wanted to keep going and she fully committed. Yeah. And so she, um, yeah, she was like, I'm done. And it was super casual. You know, I was like, oh my God, I was so excited for her. Like go try to get pregnant, all these things. Um, wait, sorry to interrupt you one more time. When you got pregnant back to back at any point, did you think about retiring or were you always thinking I'm having these kids and, or I'm starting a family, but I'm going to keep playing much longer. The dream was traveling circus because my husband Very plays cool. pro beach volleyball. So, okay. and we did that for two years okay. I mean, until okay. the kids weren't free anymore. <laughs> and then I got a little, little pricey. They're free until they're, you know, over two. <laughs> yeah. um, my sister was our nanny. Like it was a, it was gnarly, but okay. really, really fun. So plan um, was to always keep playing. Yeah. And Misty was trying to get pregnant after Beijing as well. And that didn't happen. And at some point she's like, I'll just wait. And then she retired and all these things. And so I made the choice to play with someone else. And then a couple months after, like, I think it was February of 2011, which is the start of the qualification period, Misty had a change of heart. And she called me and left me a message. I need to talk to you. And we talked on the phone and, um, and I was like, Hey, well, let's meet in person. Cause I had all these questions. Cause you know, I'm like, I need to be able to trust if I'm going to go and devastate this human being, like, I need to be able to trust that you're a million percent in like, you want this as badly as re- is required. Like, you know how, what it takes, like for sure. You cannot be looking in any other direction. And we had this conversation and it was really emotional one, like relatively speaking for Misty. And she was very open. And like, those things are like life to me when Misty is like that open, you know, it's beautiful. She's so powerful when she expresses herself. Um, and so she, I mean, if your dream, (laughs) Misty was a dream in so many ways of mine, she came back, things changed. I could not, I could not say no you know, but I prayed on it. I talked to my advisors. I did not make it willy nilly because Nicole Branagh is an amazing human and deserves honesty and truth. And so I remember I called Nicole. And I was like, Hey, can we meet up for coffee? She said, yes. And I will never forget Manhattan beach, um, coffee bean and leaf. And I sat I down. It well. I, grabbed, I sat outside. Um, and I grabbed her hand and said, she's like, what's up? She could tell I was rattled. I'm like, I'm about to break your heart. Oh, geez. Oh, and it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my professional life like times a bajillion. Cause I, I was not lying to her when I said I'm committed. I, I did not lie to her when I said we can win and I believe in us and I'm all in, you know, and then just things shifted and mm-hmm. it was Misty. Oh, <laughs> so, so she handled it like a champion the following days, you know, a lot of aggressive calls and she, you know, she had expressed herself and I, I heard it and understood completely. And so that was, guys, that. you guys got back together. You broke Misty up with I. somebody. Yes. And then, <laughs> yes. And then you and Misty get back together yeah, yeah. and you, you're all in for 2012. Yeah. And you, you, you going into that game, coming off, giving birth to two children. Misty was coming off a torn Achilles, which she got in Dancing with the Stars, which no. I didn't know, which is just, <laughs> yeah. I feel like an athlete's nightmare. Dude, I guess it's, an, it's like kryptonite. Right? Oh, yeah. That'd but be she terrible. was incredible. I, I, I feel like I remember seeing her, but I don't remember her tearing her. Go Achilles. back. Well, she did it in training. 
Okay. Got it. Yeah. Um, so you guys get back together and you go into 2012. How, how was the reunion of the two of you? Did you, did yeah. you go back into your old ways? Did you click very quickly? It was easy or was there an adjustment period the second time around? It was, it was super easy. Um, that being said, one of the first things, I, one of the really important things for me before we agreed to move forward, I'm like, miss, I want us to work with a performance psychologist. Like I, oh. I want us to do this so bad. And she was willing to do that for me, which is nice. Cause that's not her, her shtick, you know? Um, and so we worked so hard with Mike Gervais, who is like the best of the best. Um, and for in 2011 and then 2012 rolled on, she didn't want to see him anymore. Really? And so I kept seeing him. Yeah. But it was like, we had the foundation. Um, and I, that could be a little bit dramatic. I think we saw him a couple of times. I know in London he sat with us, but mm-hmm. I, it was more sparse in 2012, which I didn't get cause we like needed it. Totally. Um, but the second tournament back in 2011, Misty tore her meniscus. And we didn't, we were in China. She went down in the semifinals or finals and she was bawling and Misty does not ball. And we're getting carried off. We're going to see the physio. And she's like, she looked up at me and she's like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm I'm literally the first words out of my mouth, Kelly, were like, if we don't play one more match, I am just so grateful that we were reunited. And we had a couple of sessions with her Gervais at the time. So I felt more connected to Misty than ever. And at that moment, I'm like, this is the gift of all gifts. We're fine. And then Misty's Misty and she bounces back like a champion and better than ever. And 2011 was great. We won a lot. Um, We were in the contention a lot. 2012 was a poop show. (laughs) Leading into the Olympics. Yeah. Yeah, because you guys, I guess, were underdogs for the first time. I mean... Ish. Are you going to con- concede on that and say that you're underdogs <laughs> yeah. or no? Did you guys feel that no. way? We, uh, we felt like we had something to prove because okay. we weren't the number one seed, certainly. Okay. Um, and we didn't. We didn't deserve the number one title that year. But we knew what was inside of us. So we knew who we were. We, we literally forgot who we were for most of 2012. Interesting. And then, yeah, we just, my husband, like there was just so many things that came together, but we forgot, we literally lost our mojo. It's like an Austin Powers movie. And then we found it together. <laughs> At the Olympics? <laughs> right, no, like we won the last tournament pre-London and that was the shift. Okay. And the, just the method of going there, we had some weird matches. We always stuck together. Our coach just kept firing us up and he's like, okay, that was great. Now, can you do it again? You want again? Okay. Now, can you do it? And we just were started like this tension was building and this like confidence was building. Then we won. And then we had three weeks of training at home where we were just so balls to the wall. So in our little sacred circle, my husband was training against every day, just sharpening our tools. And it was so fun and lighthearted. And we turned the corner. Like whatever we were lacking, it was emotional and which played into our mental kind of like constriction Mm -hmm. and we lost it in those three weeks and then it was game on. So you head into London feeling confident, even though you hadn't been all year Yeah, and you win again, Yeah, which is just insane. Three gold medals in a row. I wish. Um, (laughs) Well, just don't retire. It could happen. (laughs) (laughs) But so this, it's your third Olympics. You're defending two back-to-back gold medals. What's your mindset this time? We're just going to win. We have some. We have something to prove because we haven't shown it this year. What is, what is it? What are you feeling this time? You know, it's because 2012 was so weird for us, like so not normal, not winning. Um, we did the hard work before London, you know, and then we turned that corner, and I felt it every day. Like I literally had this knowing, like we got this. It's not the we best. got it. It's the, I I want that. <laughs> Right. I'm, I'm, I'm working toward that because Misty, most of our career, we won the match before we got out there because of, because of who we were together. Like we just had this knowing and this trust and we can be down 11 points and you're still dead. <laughs> like you're gone, you know? And so I had that a hundred percent in London. I like, I had that and it was shocking to me that I had it kind of, and Misty, I think was a little bit more like this, um, just a little. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why I say that. I haven't talked about that either, but it was just the, it was, there was a tentativeness in the first couple matches that were not misty, but she's such a gamer and she's so legit and she's just so persistent, you know, um, she's so me in so many ways. And so she just, we just stuck together and then it was game over once we got to the playoff rounds, like misty was next level, which she, you know, her, her weakest is next level. <laughs> So she was next, next level. And it was just game over. We got really challenged in the semifinal match. I was about to ask about that. Ass kicked. You were, you're playing China and mm-hmm. you fell behind multiple times. And apparently it was pouring rain. 
Which that was that? in Beijing. Oh, so in okay. London, not pouring rain, but we're playing okay. at midnight. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Fun. It's crazy how late crazy. y'all's matches are. I, I remember yeah. watching you in Rio and your matches being so late. That hit, Rio pissed me off more because the time change is like, it was four or five hours, right, in Rio. And they just, they say they want us in prime time at home, mm-hmm. which were like glorious, but they didn't do it. <laughs> So it's like, dude, I have 40-year-old eyes. Like, I would rather not play at midnight. Yeah, because you know? it's, it's pitch black. It, and the lighting was so bad in Rio. Like, yeah, There's so totally. many things. But London was magical. Okay. And everything was pristine. And who cares? Like, ultimately, who cares? Like, I'll play at 3 in the morning. Like, just put me in. Exactly. We're in the Olympics. And so um, I so forget you what your question the, was. You make it through the semifinals. Yeah, but we were we – were, so we were down 14-7 against the number one team in the world. And that year, the Chinese were – awesome. They mm-hmm. were the number one hands down. And so we had a matchup against them early. I think they had an earlier loss. So we pitted up early, um, down 14, seven, but I have a distinct uh, memory within the match of we're getting our ass kicked. It's a timeout, but I felt their nerves. I felt really? their discomfort. Like, you know, that sixth sense we have when totally. you're like on point, I felt it and missing. I talked about it and it was just, we just outlasted. And that's what we did better than anyone, you know? And then once you like crack the armor, and you stick together, like people start falling apart, you know, and we never fell apart, which was a beautiful, beautiful thing. Even if we lost, we didn't fall apart. You know, like we were just always coming after you and going for your throat. Um, and that's an art form that um, I, I want Brooke and I to develop, but it was a huge win. And to me, that was like the, and I don't no disrespect to the team we play in the finals, April and Jen, who are incredible. And that was more stressful than the Chinese match actually, because you like another American team, you're like, get out of here. <laughs> like we're the team, you know, it's a different emotion battle to play another for sure. American team for the final but winning the semifinal we weren't gonna lose no can way. you do you have any specific thing that you can point out that you were like oh they're nervous no it was just like, feel it in the air oh gosh I remember looking through the net and just like they I mean they were dominating we couldn't do anything right and they can do no wrong and I just remember looking at them being like nope they're not, they're not sound. And like, even just like, there are moments where you cross the net, you know, and you like hit high fives. And I always subconsciously, now I'm aware of it. Like I divide them. (laughs) Like I go right at them, you know, and I, and split them up. And I just, I just, I I felt it. I don't know what to say. I just felt it. And a couple of interactions and eye contact and these things. And, and I think I was looking for it because it's like, you have, you know, when you're down, it's like, I need to use everything I have, like every ounce of my everything. And it just showed up, you know, makes sense. Yeah. I feel you on that. Yeah. But so you think that the, the semifinal match against China was not more difficult, but it was just, it was a completely different feeling than playing yeah. that final because you played China in the finals of 2008. Yes. So it's kind of like you, you, you got over that hurdle of who yeah. you typically play in the final and then you're playing another American side. Yeah. And that, I mean, were you nervous? Were you like, oh my gosh, if we lose, we're losing to an American, like, is it worse to lose to an American, another American team or another country? Because I, I would feel like it'd be worse to lose to another American team. No, totally. I I was just going to say it's like 50, 50, but it might be 60, 40 worse. But you, you know, obviously you want, you want your country to be the best. Totally. Totally. So, you know, yeah. That's just really petty, but it's honest. It, it is. It is petty. Yeah. No, I feel you on that. And that's, it's, yeah. it's so true. Well, yeah. you win and, yeah. but you, you were pregnant during I was pregnant, 2012. Yes. Yeah. I feel like scouty. the Olympics is just like your <laughs> thing. <magical. laughs> well, I'm you just you're like, always trying to thread the needle. You yeah, know? Exactly. Like, well, it's true. I mean, as a female athlete, you kind of have, especially if you're trying to start a family, like you kind of have to, because you have to time it perfectly. Totally. And that was the perfect timing. And, you know, my first two pregnancies with my boys were so easy. Like I literally had no more, I had headaches, but I had no morning sickness. And they always say like, just base your next, next pregnancy on your, your earlier ones. Right. And I'm like, well, amazing. I'm not going to get morning sickness. I'm not going to get tired, all these things. And so we tried in July, got pregnant, you know, the Olympics come and I'm just a couple weeks. Like I think max, maybe six weeks by the end of it. Did you know? Um, so I had these, I had some symptoms that I only had had in my life when I was pregnant. Like I would sneeze and I would feel like I was getting like brutally stabbed. <laughs> like just the tendons and your, your, your bone, your muscles are different, you know, okay. just the relaxant or something you have in your body. Um, so I, I, <laughs> One time, dude, we were getting ready to play uh, the Netherlands and I kept having these stabbing pains when I would sneeze or something. 
because I was pregnant. And, um, and that was my first clue. But then one time I was guarding myself so much that a rib went out. <laughs> Well, and at like, the Olympics? At the Olympics. And I like oh went down, goodness. I couldn't breathe. And we like in six hours, we were playing the, the Dutch team who were crazy and aggressive. And I was so panicked and I did therapy all day. It was so stressful. Um, wow. But I, yeah, it was crazy. So that was like how I knew. And I was late and I'm like clockwork, you know, with my, my, my cycle. Um, but I was in an ice bath after a match win and with my boys in there, like splashing around with me. And um, I remember being like, babe. He's like ordering room service like two in the morning. And I was like, I think I'm pregnant. And he like took a moment and he's like, that's how we do it. And like, carry on. <laughs> it was crazy. That's awesome. And then I told him, go win a gold medal. Point, I know, let's do it. And then I told Misty at some point, she's like, am I supposed to be surprised? Oh, you know, man. and part of me, Kelly, like just the woman in me, like I didn't really realize how self absorbed I was. Like, I, you know, like I, I didn't, I never stopped to think like maybe this would hurt Misty. That you were getting, that you were, got pregnant before the Olympics. That, no, just that I, well, A, that, that, yes. And that I was pregnant again, you know, and she had tried and it was harder and it, and I just didn't even think about it. Like I knew I was going to be okay physically, mm -hmm. you know? And so I just, and I didn't even know if I, you know, we, we, am I supposed to say miss we had sex? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like what's the process Oops. there Yeah, <laughs> yeah, on purpose. And I'm trying to have baby, you know, yeah. and I didn't, I didn't have that conversation with her, which in hindsight, I wish I would have, cause she's my girl. Like yeah. she's my sister. I really wish I would have. And I feel like it might've been a slap in the face, um, uh, you know, for her and even, yeah. And kind of, cause that experience happened like pre Beijing too, you know, like I tried and went away and she's affected by me so deeply for sure. And yet I didn't share every part of the experience with her. And in hindsight, I would have done that differently. Um, and who knows how disruptive that would have been. I don't know, mm -hmm. but I know yeah. I wasn't keeping it from her intentionally. I was just going about my life, you know? Makes so sense. I just wanted to add that because I have guilt around that and I can't wait to talk to her. Cause I love her. Like, I feel like my, one of my least favorite things is like unintentionally messing up or unintentionally hurting someone. Yeah. You know, and um, it's just for me that lack of awareness makes me yeah. sad. But like you said, that just comes from a conversation that you can call her up and yeah, things to talk about. Like, easier said than done, but yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys, you guys win gold, you're pregnant, you you have your third child post Olympics. Mm -hmm. Misty retires. At this point, are you thinking I'm done competing or are you still no. you want more? You always I want, want more. more. I always want more. Freaking yeah. Well, awesome. like on the sand. Yeah. Until you don't. And then I'll be <laughs> yeah. um, on the sand in London out of nowhere. We're hugging April and Jen after the match. I hug April and I literally say, no, let's go win gold in Rio. No way. It was like, I was possessed. Don't know where that came from. Had, wow. You know, I knew Misty was retiring. Okay. So obviously there were, and the volleyball world's so small. Like I knew who I'd want to play with, mm -hmm. it, but it came out of my mouth, you know? And, and then leading up to Rio, that was the conversation that all the media outlets had, which hurt Misty. Which that, is you so hurt, sad. that you hurt Misty. Because it's like, wait, were we a team at that point or were you ready to play with April? You know, because like- you, kind of, Because you said that. Because I said that. Oh, Damn. that's so interesting. Yeah, and Jen, her April's partner is retiring. Misty was retiring, so all of that was Makes established. Sense. Yeah. So, but anyhow, we're you know we're human, and these things hurt us, and so that plays into my guilt for not sharing that stuff too. But um, but no, so I was clearly already ready to go to Rio to win. Yeah, you, all in London. That is that's incredible. obnoxious. No, it's not. It's not obnoxious because people ask me about World Cup wins, and I've always said that. As soon as we win, I'm thinking about the Olympics the next year because for us it's back to back, and literally on the field, standing on the field, where the crowd's still there, everyone's celebrating, and I'm thinking, oh, in a year we got to go win Olympic gold. So I I get yeah, it. That's rad. It it makes sense. Um, so you end up partnering with April Ross, which you <laughs> decided on <laughs> right when you ended 2012, um, and you guys worked together four years, head into 2016, into Rio. What, what did that feel like going into an Olympics without Misty and with a different partner? Like, was it, did you have a different mentality? Again, this is your fourth time doing it. 
Yeah. Um, you know, well, first of all, like after Missy and I won in London, I did not want to let go of her hand. Like, you know how you do the post game, like interviews and mm. I'm like, every picture is like, <laughs> like Misty. don't For leave. Sure. Cause it was just, man, it was just, it was so heavy and so beautiful. And if you like, after we won, if you look at me on the podium or that, like I can't even control myself. Like really, it was so emotional to me. Cause it was just that part of our lives together was over. Like, and I just, I had, I live, I just love her so much. And mm-hmm. I just so enjoyed our last two years to get our whole career, but the last two years were so meaningful. And so that was devastating. I had to grieve it and I did it in real time, you know, and then, you know, and I, I feel like when you live things sincerely, you can transition faster. Did you, you know, did you know, at what point did Misty say I'm, I'm retiring after London? Early. Got like, it. The, it so was, yeah. When you guys yeah. decided to go to London, she said, I want to go one more time. Yeah. So you knew this was, yes. this was like the, the victory lap with you two. hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that, and it was awesome, you know, and it's just, and it was really meaningful her cause she, you know, her career is, was wrapping up and I'm so, it's so rad. She got the ending she deserves. Um, and to be part of that was just so special. So, so yeah. So moving on to April, I was ready mentally I, and emotionally I had grieved Misty, but Misty's with me, you know, so I take Misty with me everywhere I go. Certainly she was with me as I partner with April and April's just super easy. She's rad. She's a, she's a worker. She is a, a tasker. She wants to dominate. She wants, she wants to win. She believes she will. Um, it was so easy to play with her. It was so rad, you know, yeah. totally different than Misty. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, the same in a lot of ways, you know, and I don't want to say they're walls, but they're just less, less expressive, less emotive, um, less open. Um, so that's a constant theme in my life. Brooke too, very similar to my three previous partners. Um, and they're all just so rad. So going with April was awesome. It was so, the easiest part was training and being on the court with her. Um, like our kind of connection off the court was awesome, easy, not a lot of depth, um, but doesn't mean that the love wasn't real and the respect totally. wasn't real, you know? Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. How was it? I remember watching you in Rio in 2016. Um, we had lost at that point in the quarterfinal, oh, so we didn't sorry. even get to. We actually, we didn't, we didn't even get to the village or to Rio. I ended up going to Rio after we lost, which, in hindsight, wasn't the best idea because I was just excessively depressed and oh, just black hole. But, um, well, so many questions about that for you. Yeah. Well, uh, but you, you guys lose in the semis. Mm-hmm. This, which is the first time that's happened to you yeah. in your Olympic career in beach, beach yeah. you, you end up going on and getting a bronze medal, which is no easy feat because you, you come off of a huge oh, no. loss. And so, you know, the, the dream of a gold medal is, is over, but now you have to turn around and go for a bronze. So what yeah. was, what did, that's something you'd never had to do before. What, how did no. you go through that? It was harder than I can ever put into words. It's like, and it might sound dramatic to people who this isn't their living, but it was just so, it was so devastating. Like that's not even exaggerating. It was just, it was like a soul. It was so confusing. It was just like, <laughs> what the F just happened? There's a <laughs> lot of shame involved because I had a real tough night and I just was, I, I, the hardest part about that loss was walking outside and like, my, my parents didn't know how to handle me. My whole crew, we have a huge crew. Like they, you know, there was, there's so much love, but like there was no eye contact. Oh. You know, I, I, I forced myself and I wanted to, to go over to April's family and friends. And it was so hard for me to look at them in their eyes. And all I could say was, I'm sorry, you know, and it just, it, it just hurt me so badly to, I feel like, you know, again, everything I do affects other people. Mm-hmm. So I just, that was really heavy on me and the way I framed it was not healthy. And so the 24 hours between matches was just, it was horrific. So how and did you, zombie. how did you like put on your uniform and go back out there? And- well, my husband was my hero, dude. I, he stayed with me all night and he, I bawled all night. I, I <sighs> maybe slept maybe two hours. Like I was just like, and he just held me. And at some point I can't, and I, I had a video session scheduled with my coach in the morning. So I could like try to transition into my mindset. Um, but my husband, I think it was, I don't know if it was before or after that video. He's like, Carrie, he's like, you got it. You got to stop this. Like it's, it's kind of ridiculous at this point because you get to fight for a medal and you're an American and the American spirit is you're going to go and kick their ass True. and do not forget who you are. And he just would say these things and he made it, he took it, my, my focus off of me and made it broader 
Like yeah. think about your partner, think about your family, think mm -hmm. of all your army behind you, your country and go. For sure. And that helped me so much, you know, and he made me realize I was just wallowing and I couldn't get out of it. Like I was still, I was still numb and still whatever devastated, but that helped me turn the corner, you know, and April, you know, lived at her own way. Um, and then we just, yeah, I don't know. Was there, Thank was God there, did you guys come together the day of and sort through emotions or were you both just kind of like, we're both going to handle this. However, we're going to handle it, compartmentalize and go out and try to win. Yeah. Well, we each had video sessions. We didn't hang out together during the day. Cause it's like, we finished, I mean, I didn't sleep that night. She yeah. didn't sleep that night. So we're just trying to like recover and get our minds right. We had a team video session. Um, like we did before every match at some point that was like our first coming together. Mm -hmm. I just remember before, you know, when you're in your, kind of your holding area, we warm up, we're in the holding area, getting ready to go out. My, our coach, Marcia Sicoli, who's incredible. He's like, you guys, whatever happens tonight, whether you're up by a billion or you're down by 15, like just stick together. Mm -hmm. Like he, he kept saying that, like that was the one thing he wanted to get across to us. The first game and a half is happening. And it's kind of how the night before ended, not good volleyball, getting our butts kicked, like just really just disconnected. Mm -hmm. And at some point, halfway through game two, we're losing. April comes up to me, grabs my hand. I'm just like being a robot. Like just, I have to win. I have to score. <laughs> like, like not, I'm all there, but I'm not all there. And she stops me, grabs my arm and like makes me look in her face in her eyeballs. And that was it. Like that changed. I everything. love that. And then we had one play really hustle scramble play, um, that just solidified it. And then we never turned back from there. That's dope. Just stick together. Totally. Same I mean, thing with my marriage, like, it's just <laughs> like the best piece of a marriage advice ever, Kelly. It's when you want to run away from each other, you mm -hmm. have to run toward each other. And I love that. And it's the hardest thing in the world. You have to run on a track that's circular. So you'll get to the other <laughs> side. You think you're running exactly. away, but you just come back around. That's true. Yeah. Maybe I'll look at that. Cause that space is important too. And things are hard. It's true. Yeah. 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 Circular. I mean, that's why we wear, you know, circular rings. Yeah. That's there you go. Happens. Yeah. Can't break it. Can't break the no. circle. No. Um, so you win, you win bronze, which is obviously, I mean, I didn't get a medal so in 2016. So jealous. Um, <laughs> yeah. at, at what, after 2016, was there any point where you thought about retiring or were you all in again on 2020? Well, <laughs> it took me, I, I mean, after we won, there's so much relief. And after a win, like the last thing I want to feel is relief. Because then it's like, ooh, we eked by. <laughs> like, really? I don't I feel that relief feeling. every time. Do I will. Yes. Oh yeah. Because I understand that the your you, every tournament, a major tournament, you're on a knife's edge of like if one thing goes wrong, yeah, you could lose and it's over in a, in the blink of an eye. And everything has to go right to win. So there is some sort of relief because I do think there's yeah. a there is a bit of no, you're right. I mean, you're not wrong. I have 1% of my battery, by the way. Oh, phone. really? On your computer? Uh, yeah. Okay. Do you have a, my, do you have a charger? I have my phone. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't. Well, okay. Um, then we should But hurry. no, but I appreciate you saying that. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, you're right. But I don't, I don't think of it that way. I feel like if we can handle our shit, we're fine. <laughs> like we got it. You know, no, that's eliminate true. all the other I think things. That's, that's probably but why. They're both true. Like it's yeah. all true. It's that all is, just gnarly. You but. probably have a better mental... Um, fortitude than I do, if I'm being honest. Well, probably not. And whatever works, dude. <laughs> That's true. So. so how has your motivation changed from when you were younger? Or do you think it's this, do you think that you still have the same competitive fire? Do you think it's evolved over time? What do you, what do you think? Oh, what a question. Um, um, let me start by saying, I think this pause, this delay in the Olympics and I haven't played, I haven't practiced since mid-March. This is the longest I've ever been without playing volleyball, even when I'm nine months pregnant, you know? Mm -hmm. So that, this has served such a great purpose to rebuild that fire. And That's you feel like, and you feel like this pause has, deal. has rebuilt it for you. 100% because I miss it. And I haven't been able to miss it for, for 30 years. <laughs> You know, so true. Started. So I think as you get older, like you, you can hear Kobe talk about it and Jordan, it's like, and you can probably relate like, at, you know, after you played for so long, it gets harder to get up mm -hmm. for things. And I love training. You know, it's, it's interesting where it's almost like I'm to a point in my career where competing almost pisses me off and like, not in a good way. 
Like I used to be pissed off for greatness and now it's just kind of an irritant. Do you, I don't know where that came from. Do you think it, you're irritated because you're like, man, I'm the best and I've proved I'm the best, but <laughs> I got to keep proving way. that I'm the best. Maybe. Well, I, I assume there's some fear behind that, which is just lame. So I want to whatever address that. But I think that the appreciation that I have, because I've been away from the game, not by choice with the, you know, with COVID and the hunger that's being re- ignited. Like I'm not satiated. Like I want more. Those are awesome. My motivations, like throughout my career, it's always been to be the best I could be. Um, and so that hasn't, that's been very consistent, but like my desire for the game certainly has waned over the years. Mm -hmm. Um, not that I don't love it, but it's just like, my gosh, it takes a lot, you know, and everything. (laughs) Yeah. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a big emotional and mental toll. Yes. Yeah. Cause there's so many ups and downs, you know, and everyone's like, Oh, it's just sport. And you're like, well, screw you. I spent 60 hours a week and you know, eight weeks away from my family in a row like this matters, you know? And so, uh, anyhow, yeah. So very fired up. I've always, even at my lowest, I was pretty fired up to be honest, but like, I, I'm such a bad faker, bad actor. Like I just mm-hmm. want it to be authentic and hundred percent and it's, it's there. Happy to say Are you able to turn your competitive side on and off? Or do you think that you're competitive in all aspects of life? Because you're just, you're this smiling assassin. You're like the, (laughs) you're like a golden retriever that turns into a pit bull, I feel like. (laughs) Oh, I'll take that. (laughs) That could have been way worse. No, it's a good thing. (laughs) No, I like it. Um, You know, I, okay. I don't even, I don't know how to answer that. Like I'm sweating right now thinking about that. Like we went bowling, we were in Tahoe and- I was pissed that I, we didn't win. I didn't win. My son, beat, my son beat all of us. First of all, I beat him the second two games, but like, I'm like, Oh, that's interesting. That needles me a bit, you know, but like, if we're playing in the backyard, no, I don't, I don't think I can turn off. Let me, let me just be honest. Like I can't let my son beat me in volleyball. And when I'm playing a horse, I can't or, or bowling or bowling, but bowling, <laughs> I'm so terrible that it's like, uh, I'll take what I can get. So no, I think I'm just competitive by nature. I think it's fun. I think a lot of people might think I'm obnoxious because I'm trying to win all the time, but it's like, what the hell? Like, well, if, yeah, if you're not trying to win, what are you doing? Why are you, why are you playing? This is not for poops and giggles. Like it is, but winning like is that times 10. So, so true. I, I agree. All right. <laughs> At the end of every conversation, we do these repeat questions. So mm-hmm. the first one is hard work, hard work versus luck. How mm-hmm. much of success is predicated on luck? I don't believe in luck. Really? I, at I all? I don't know. I believe in law of attraction. I do, okay. Yeah. So I feel like what you focus on is what you invite in your life. I feel like what you, what your soul wants to grow through you invite in your life. I feel like everything is momentum and energy. And so I feel like the luck that comes is like you spent your time obsessing, thinking positively, like knowing this was coming and you manifested that moment that showed up as luck but I believe it's just more momentum carrying on from the work you've put in. I love that answer. So a hundred percent hard work. hundred hundred percent. But, and hard work is not just like, I'm going to go kick my butt in the gym or on the court on the field. Right. It's like the mental stuff. And it's like that. It's so interesting. Like you can want something too bad. Right. And you can suffocate it. um, And you can over effort you know, and then you're just not in the moment. And so I just feel like luck is just kind of the magic space where you have positive expectation and you just go to work with that expectation and then it turns out. You know what I'm saying? I do. I totally do. Because okay. I feel like that's something that you talked about to bring it back to what we talked about in the beginning. In that speaking engagement, you talked a lot about manifestation mentality and I really vibe with that. I love that. I believe in that and I think it's so important. And I think that makes a I think a lot of athletes probably believe that but maybe don't see it as like plainly as you do or as specifically as you do if that makes sense yeah well I've listened to a lot of people so I feel like I, I'm a terrible articulator but I feel like I can articulate my understanding of that yeah and, it, and my life has shown me that that's the truth like I, sure. I referenced hell on earth before like I believe heaven on earth and hell on earth are here <laughs> on this planet and I think it's <laughs> all what I make of it You know what Mm. I'm saying? And I feel like athletes in general are problem solvers, the elite of the elite. We all focus on the solution, you know? And I feel like inherently like, and then you work your butt off 
in combination with that. And then you get self-worth and self-confidence and then these expectations and all of that leads to the manifestation. Yes. All the you pieces know, it's not just together. daydreaming. Yeah. It's like, I'm taking care of every side of this mm-hmm. because I truly believe and I love it. And hard work to me is fun. Like Michael Jordan to me is the ultimate manifester, you know, and he helped his team to believe more. And absolutely you know, like, I want to be that so much. Um, and children feel like, are feel like, like, you have been, Oh, well, I don't, Thanks, Kel. <laughs> I'll just leave it there. Yeah. I don't want to argue for my own limitations. And I that's, just, yeah, that's you know. true. Yeah. All right. So yeah. I like that. You're the first person to say a hundred percent hard work, which hard yeah. work with an asterisk and all the other things underneath it. But I like that. You're, you're our first hundred percent. Okay. That's nice. Um, all right. So you're the most decorated beach volleyball player in Olympic history. Congrats. Thanks. Uh, you have the most career victories. You're For secure. Women. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I can't wait uh, to get rid of that. I, I need like 16 more. I can do it. You can do it. Oh, that's easy. It's coming. Yeah. You're, you're securely the goat of your sport. Let's just be clear, male or female. So you Are you have telling that. me that? That's not I, a lot coming from you. Makes I mean, me I, 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 feel like, I feel like that's, that's, that can't be contested, but maybe, maybe <laughs> it is subjective coming from well, me. I knew I liked you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So where do you want to go next and how do you keep pushing? Um, I firmly believe the best is yet to come in my competitive career. So I want to live that. And by living that, I want the results to show <laughs> I'm living that meaning I get the fourth gold medal. I become oh, yeah. the winningest, you know, I get those 16 tournaments, whatever I need with Brooke. Um, because we had that expectation and we rose to those expectations. Like I'm so pumped for that. Um, and I'm, and what was the second part of it? How do you Where, keep pushing? I feel like that we just, we just know. Yeah, it's just dude, in I you. just believe and I love it and I'm curious and I'm kind of pissed off. <laughs> you know, I just, there's so many things that drive me, but like fundamentally what's kept me going for so long and why I'm confident and more playful now with regard to Tokyo um, is I love it. Like that is to me, the ultimate fuel. Like there is no kryptonite to me that exists with something I love. I can endure and withstand and, you know, keep going. Do you think that you would be pushing as hard if you had the most career wins and you had a fourth gold medal? Like, do you think that you'd still be chasing after what you're chasing after? I'd either be retired. Like, I feel like had April and I won in Rio, I probably would have retired. And I would have been bummed and unretired like most beach ball players do. <laughs> but no, but Kelly, what I think if I, if I made the choice to be in, I think I'd be in the same spot. Like I just, there's one way to do something and that's with all your heart. So yeah. I, and you, I know and, I'd be there. And you still want it. That's and awesome. It. Well, Carrie, this has been incredible. I really appreciate you taking the time and sitting down and chatting and just telling us your story and giving us a look into your, your brain and how your heart works and your mind and just your mentality. Um, cause it's, it's very special and it's different and there's no one else like you. So, um, oh. thank you for taking the time. This was, <laughs> this was really enjoyable for me. Well, you're rad and everything <laughs> you just said to me, thank you. And I feel the same, like truly this was fun. Cool. Like, Good. I feel like, like I'm really excited right now. Awesome. <laughs> that's, a, that's a gift in these days. Like, yeah, you gotta, yeah. I, I, I've been a sloth too much. I'm ready. You lit my fire, darling. So what oh yeah, gift. let's go. Yes, I'll see let's you, go. I'll see you next summer for Dude, sure. Dude, not, no hopefully. Let's <laughs> do it. Well, you guys are just everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I look forward to, okay. Can I show you my one final vision? Yeah. Let's okay, hear it. For Tokyo. Okay. So on my vision board, I want to win, right? Brooke and I win. I have this moment where we're all, all my family, all Brooke's family, we're all on the Olympic sand together. We have the gold medals. We take a picture on the sand. Hasn't happened yet. That's going to happen. And then I don't know when the next day, next week, whatever, I want to climb Mount Fuji. I want to start pre sunrise. I want to get the peak at sunrise and just say thank you to God and thank you to my people. Like that's my vision. That's a cool vision. Isn't it a good one? Yeah, that's very thought out. I need to do that. I read I Phil Knight's Shoe Dog and it, he climbed Mount Fuji once. I'm like, I'm doing it. My, my brother has climbed Mount Fuji and he said it was it was awesome. So really? highly recommend. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Why well, am I? I can't wait to hear you. about it. <laughs> well, maybe you'll come. <laughs> maybe once I you will. go get that gold, let's do it. Oh yeah. Well, All right. Got some lactic acid. Right. I know. You're bad. Thanks. God Karen. bless, Mama. You're bad. Yeah. Bye. Bye.